All righty. I am Mike Miller, owner of M&M Barbecue Company. And I'm going to tell you something that I haven't told on camera that can get a little gory at times here, but uh, uh, explains why I always wear kind of a shaggy beard. Um, this, this story happened about 11 or 12 years ago, and I was out doing service uh, in Houston, and I was at Goody Barbecue, and we were doing repair work on um, a competitor of ours pits, and um, so they needed to get their shaft replaced, and we were just about done with this, uh, this job, and what we were doing is we were doing a full wheels and full shaft on it, so to do that, you have to put stabilizers, weld everything up, make sure everything's perfectly aligned, and then you weld all the shaft up, you put all, and then you start putting the bearings and everything back on. It's a pretty tedious job. And so we were on, like I'd say, hour four or five. So we were on the downhill side of it. We were right there at it. And so uh, we had everything packaged, everything ready to go. And at the very last thing you have to do is you have to cut these stabilizers off. So uh, I'm in the middle of the kitchen, mind you. So we're right directly in the middle of the kitchen. There's co cooks going left and right. Everybody's running around wild and stuff. And we're over there throwing sparks. And so there's three stabilizer bars. You do one every other one. And so I had already cut two of them out and I'm on the very last one and I was right in the middle of my cut and my dad, you know, we're getting ready to go. He comes and taps me on my shoulder. Well, as soon as he tapped me on my shoulder, I just ever slightly move up. And when I moved up, it caught, came up, hit me directly square in the face and it came across, which the surgeon said it was really really good how it actually happened because they said that they've had it to where it split their entire face open before where it goes up through your nose and stuff and luckily it caught me right in the crease right here again this is why i wear a beard so you can't see the scar so when it hit me i immediately knew i was in trouble so i i'm like going i kind of stumble back like this grinder falls on the ground i put my head down like this just as initial reaction as i'm looking down all i see is a puddle of blood all in the kitchen all over and i look up like this and i'm looking at my dad and he's looking at me and he's ghost white and i go how bad is it how bad is it he just looks at me and goes we gotta go to the emergency room right now we gotta go right now so i come back down and my hands are just full of blood leaking all over the floor at that point in time everybody in the kitchen's looking at it you know there's a mess going everywhere kind of forming a crowd and all that stuff well i still haven't looked at it to see how bad it is yet but I'm still halfway through the kitchen. I got to get out of the kitchen. So as I'm going out of the kitchen, they got me a rag and I'm doing this, but it's filling up the rag with blood. And so while I was walking out, there's just a trail of blood the entire way. And I still remember getting to the truck and looking, looking to see how bad it was. And as it went in, you could see, you could see bone and you could see that it was pretty much filleted open. And where I was standing, it was still dripping. And, uh, and the story kind of concludes that I told my dad, because back then we, you know, we were struggling, we were working, we were doing everything in our power to try to, to, to go. I mean, there, we didn't really have much, you know, we were a small mom and pop. It was literally just me and my dad. So, but the job had to get done. We, there was no, you, something like that happens to you and you stop and everything, the world stops. That's not what we did at all. So, um, he dropped me off at the emergency room and I was like, go back and finish this job. We, we can't leave it unfinished. We got to leave it. We got to finish it. So my dad drove back, he cut the last few of one, got them fixed up and got everything finished. And we, fi we ended up finishing that job. And I ended up waiting in the emergency room for I don't know, four or five hours with no pain medicine at all and all that. And uh, they ended up putting 16 stitches in. And um, uh, about two weeks later, I was in El Paso working again. Cause at that point in time, there was no stopping there. What you only had to go, you know? And so, uh, that's a, that's a story that I've really never said, uh, you know, on camera or any of that things Just kind of keep that to myself. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the story.